So I got a desire to do some paper tests this morning with some of my bottle inks. I've gotten away from fountain pens and bottled inks for quite some time because generally I'm just using my Hobonichi cousin for my daily everything and everything's in that same planner. I don't really reach for anything extra um, regularly. I just, I've been doing things so functionally lately and leaving, you know, the pretty stuff has been on the back burner. Um, but anyway, this morning I just wanted to, I got a little bug and decided I wanted to see if the same papers I have always loved are still my favorite or if anything's changed. And there were some that I had never done wet ink tests on. And so I just kind of pulled them in and wanted to see um, what they would do. But it's interesting because they all have their purpose. Each different notebook has serves a purpose and um, but all of them definitely do not hold up to wet inks. So it's good to know when you're reaching for a notebook that you, you know, you have, you have the right one in place for what you want it for. I tested all the same inks on the same paper. So I tested this Ferris wheel press. There is no ink name to that. So on each of these papers, it says no name, but it's the same ink. I don't have the box for this. It's really old. I tested this Lamy, which is a blue, also no name on it, um, so it just says Lamy Blue. I tested this Noodler's Bernanke ink, uh, Bernanke Black, because this is a super fast drying ink, and this is what I use for my go-to when I just grab a quick fountain pen. Um, that's what's inked up here it's fast drying and then I just used a felt tip micron because a lot of people use these this surprised me so many people use Stalogy notebooks and use fountain pens in them and I was shocked to see how much bleed through now these are super super wet drops that I put on here specifically to see how how well it could hold up the Stalogy did not not even a little bit and I was surprised but if I was writing with the pen there was very, very little bleed through, but there still was some. And then the felt tip pen, there was very little ghosting. So it held up to the pens okay, did not hold up to the swatching, you know, at all. So I was surprised because so many people use this paper with fountain pens, but then you have the Leuchterm. And this is a really absorbent paper, but most of it held up pretty well. The only one that didn't was this Lamy ink, this one. That was the first one I tried and it bled through pretty badly. But just writing with all of the inks, that paper held up really well. So that was pretty good, but there is no sheen on this paper at all. Like you can't see the sheen of any of those, any of the inks, but this was really good. So the Leuchterm held up just like I knew it would. This is Midori paper. I had never pen tested on Midori paper before, and I was super surprised at how well this paper held up. I mean, not only did it hold up, but the sheen on every single ink is there. I don't know why I'm so surprised by this. I don't use this paper very often. I've had this specific notebook for a very long time and have just never used it. And I'm like, why am I not using this? <laughs> it's so good. I mean, the ghosting is even minimal. And I pulled, I pulled this ink the same on every single paper. So it's not like there was any less ink here than there was on the other ones. And this was, this was my biggest surprise, I think. I'm super happy with how this one turned out. This is the Onion Skin Journal. And this paper is like, like comparable to a thin vellum. It's very cool. This notebook is very cool. That's all the paper is. Um, I kind of love it. I haven't used it much. I've kind of done a few test pages in it, but anyway, it's, I knew this would show through completely a hundred percent on everything you write. It shows through on this paper, but I wanted to see if it would hold up and not bleed and get the next paper wet, which it did. It held up just fine. 
I mean, the show through is in crazy, but it's kind of cool because depending on how creative you're being and what you're doing, maybe you want it to pop through on the other side. Um, the sheen is there. It's minimal. I don't know if you can, oh, my AC just kicked on, of course, but that sheen is minimal, but it is there. Not as bright as some of the other ones, but that held up pretty good. Obviously we have the Hobonichi. This is an old notebook that I grabbed for just tester pages now. But um, if anyone knows Tomo River Paper, you know this is one of the most fountain pen friendly papers there is. But the show through on here is quite a bit. Not with just writing with the pen, but when I pulled the, the ink, whoops, the show through was a lot. The sheen is really high on this paper though, which is why a lot of people love it for fountain pen ink, because if you have the time to let it dry, it is beautiful on the paper. But for quick writing, I definitely can't do it. The, um, the ghosting is minimal though, with the pen, writing with the pen. It was just pulling that it kind of struggled with. This is a Moleskine notebook. And I was a little shocked in how badly it bled through. It even got to the next page a little bit. And even with just writing with the pen, it bled through quite a bit. I didn't expect that because a lot of people use Moleskine with fountain pens. Um, the felt tip pen held up just fine. It ghosts quite a bit, but that's Moleskine's known for that, which is fine. But the sheen, there's no sheen on this. I mean, you can kind of see some sparkle in the Lamy because it's a shimmer, but the sheen is not there. It's very matte. It absorbed very quickly and it's a very matte finish with all of these inks. This is the Traveler's Notebook. This is by Traveler's Company. I mean, let's see if I can, oh yeah. So, it's by Traveler's Company, and I was, again, surprised at how well this paper held up. I can see why so many people absolutely love these notebooks in this paper. Um, the sheen is super high, which I didn't expect, and then the ghosting is minimal, and there is no bleeding. There's no bleed through at all. This is really great paper. And I don't use it very often. I started to a little bit um, a while ago and just didn't stick with this system. So I put it away, but the ink looks awesome on this paper. Super surprised, super happy. This one is just a regular cardstock notebook that came with, I have no idea. There's nothing special to it. There's no brand name on it. The paper is kind of a medium thickness. I couldn't even tell you, um, you know, the weight of it, but there's little to no sheen on this. There's some shimmer from the shimmer inks, but there's little to no sheen and a lot of bleed through. So this was not a very quality notebook, but um, one that you would just kind of throw around. I use it with, you know, regular ballpoint or gel pens and it, and it worked out just fine actually. Let's see. Yeah, there was no bleed through with a regular pen. Um, this is, I love these notebooks so much. This is by Log and Jotter, and I used to get quite a few of these a couple of years ago. I have I had to stop because I had a subscription and they were coming in and I wasn't using them fast enough. But these are the cutest little pocket notebooks. But the paper is not one that you would want to use with a fountain pen ink. Um, which makes sense. I mean, I can tell by the feel of it. It's not a fountain pen friendly paper, but I did want to just see if the sheen came through. This paper absorbed the ink so fast. I didn't even have time to look back and watch it. It was crazy. There's a lot of feathering with most of these as well. So not fountain pen friendly at all, but the Sakura Micron felt tip, totally fine. And I've used these um, with with ballpoint pens and that paper is just fine. This is more utility to me and just a throw around. It's there in my car for shopping lists and I throw them in my bag, but definitely not one, you know, 
that you would reach for the fountain pens for. The last one is Ferris Wheel Press paper. I don't know if they've changed their paper since I got the my notebooks uh, probably two years ago, maybe more. I can't even remember when I got these, but I can tell by the feel of it and by the look, it's not fountain pen friendly, which is a little surprising just to be clear because they have their own fountain pens, which are these and their own fountain pen inks. And then this is their paper, but I'm wondering if maybe they have fountain pen fountain pen friendly paper that I don't have. Um, these are such cute little notebooks, but the, the papers just absorbed the ink so quickly and there's bleed through even with writing with their own brush pens. They're called brush fountain pens. Um, writing with their own pens, their own ink, it bled through really badly. So I'm guessing this is just maybe not their fountain pen friendly paper. So my very favorites and the ones I'm sticking to, which I already knew, but the newer one is this Midori paper. I am, I'm super thrilled with this. So Traveler's Company notebooks, Midori, obviously Lloyd's Term. This is an old work planner. And then the Hobonichi, obviously with the Tomo River paper. These ones are all fountain pen friendly. These ones are all ones that I reach for regularly anyway. The other ones are more specialty things that, you know, it makes sense to grab them for something else, but not fountain pens. So I'm glad I did that because, oh, I forgot the Stalogy. Nope, not even a chance. I can't believe that was like one of the worst ones. So crazy to me. Anyway, so hopefully that was helpful for you guys as well. If you were, if you were wondering.